Greetings! It is I, Tantus Nav and Jacobin, Lord Emperor the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It is time to talk about those three anime series that I brought up that were more of a classics. I did talk about them as being classics, and tell you how to use them in your best game. Well, at least give you the good suggestions for you to base them off. But let's dive into it. Let's talk about Shugo Chara. So for Shugo Chara, I'm going to say give your characters 250 points. They're going to be powerful, but they're not going to be ridiculously powerful. Now, what you're going to do for this one is, I would recommend making your characters the team of the Guardians. You can have just the four of them, or you could have five. I'd say keep the four or five characters, because then you can fill the roles very easily in the same sort of grouping. You know, you can have the one beast person be the Joker, the wild card, while the other four play the role of the sort of student council. But regardless, anyway, so they're all the Guardians. And what you're going to do is you're going to have them deal with ex-eggs and ex-characters and have that kind of adventures along that y way. And of course they're going to have their own Shugochara and I would recommend having both the character transformations and character changes. You could start with just the one, but if you're going into a lot of storylines with the uh, ex-characters and the ex-eggs, both, sort of both of them, then I would recommend maybe just giving your characters the ability to use the transformations off the bat. And they do have the option of having from one to three eggs. Now, three eggs would be very unusual. Um, maybe have, like, if one player really wants to have that, they could have it. But one or two just seems to be more than normal. There was a good number of characters that had two eggs. Most of them really only had one, of course, but there were a few that had two. And um, so that would seem like it could be something that would be possible. Regardless, they're going to have to split their points when they're doing this, and sort of maybe aiming their design for focusing on the different ones for a variety of abilities rather than focusing on one ability and making it very well, which both have their merits in the circumstances. is because each, transfer, each transformation has its own powers and abilities that may or may not be helpful depending on the circumstances. So I would have them, other than dealing with the X character, Maybe have them deal with Easter itself or another similar organization that's doing something bad, creating them. That's very easy that you can do that. And um, you could even have some like rival people, like similar to what they had in the anime. They had some people that ended up being rival sort of enemies in the season. Eventually, yes, they might find bo friendship or bonds or something like that. But that's entirely up to your storyline about... I would recommend keeping it a little more lighthearted that maybe they would end up that way. But when it would happen, it's completely up to you. So next I want to talk about Tenchi Muyo, and, particularly, and again, particularly the Ryooki OVA series. I would say 350 to 450 points. You're going to like look to which of the OVA you're going to really aim for, and maybe then make your decisions on number of points you're spending on it. And you're going to be a little into like where the OVA would be when you're talking about it. Now, the thing is actually... There has been an entire book on Tenshi Muyo. In the previous edition of Besom, they put out specific anime-based Besom books. So you could look at a, you could look through these books, and make an, a game specifically based in that universe very easily. So, and Tenshi Muyo was one of them. There is, of course, a whole bunch of other ones, which maybe I will mention some of the other ones. But if you really wanted to look into it, you could look in there now. It is compatible with the third edition, and what it would be is would just give you a little bit more suggestions on doing things. I would look at it more for guidelines rather than using specific rules, because the normal book we have now in the edition we're using, it has all the rules that you can use these things too. It just, you know, when you're talking about like mechas and spaceships and certain kind of like defects and things like that that work more in that setting, you easily integrate them into your game now. But let's talk about your characters. Now that we've talked about some things that will help you out, you know, give you a little crutch. So I would recommend that you keep variety in your characters for one thing. Have them from all over the galaxy or different sort of things. You could have like a Dryan, someone from Earth. If you have someone from Earth, I'd recommend maybe that they be from the Misaki family, so they sort of take the Tenchi role. All of the spin-offs have someone from his family line who gets who have not necessarily don't have the same abilities, but sort of, you know, because they have that bloodline to them they can sort of fit into the universe. They might not unlock the same power as he does. That's fine if you don't do that. You could have someone that's just really skilled or something, or, you know, just because of what he gets, you know. If you had someone join the Galaxy Police, they may get equipment that would make it for it. Like, Mahoshi, she doesn't have any special powers. She's got equipment that makes up for it. She's got a police, like a space cruiser. She's got her own ship, you know. These are the things you would spend points on. Now, there are a couple of routes you can go for your storyline. 
you could go similar to like Tenchi Muyo GXP. You could be a member of like an organization, like the Galaxy Police, or you could be like some people from the from the Dry Royal Court, something like that, where they're fitting into other organizations. Or if you're going for some more of like an independent, like sort of Tenchi and his group are, I would recommend that maybe you go for that cohabitation sort of kind of thing that they go for, and have things from their like their past or their character backgrounds come in and affect the group. You know. It will be similar to what happens in the OVA, is that things related to any of their backgrounds are what comes in and causes things to happen. It's sort of like, and it changes and it depends on the different characters, but it can occur for differently that it's this character, and it might be a couple of characters too, you know, that these, these backgrounds, so, so have your characters come up with some very good backgrounds that you have an idea of where you can come up with storylines from. And, you know, you can run it by them, like, like oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to bring in this character from your past, you know. You just tell them you're going to bring in the character from the past. You're not going to let them know that this is going to be the major villain or something, if it's going to be the major villain. That's completely up to you how you want to put that one. And the last one I want to talk about is Slayers. I'm going to give you 500 points, I would say, in Slayers. Slayers, the characters are very powerful, almost kind of ridiculous sometimes. And so you want that sort of over-the-top, ridiculous power. You want to have that. And you're going to be set in this world, and I would set that... You're going to follow adventures that might have to deal with dragons, or they might have to deal with demons. You could follow some of the storylines from the anime very easily. If you really wanted to, you could make up your own storyline. Or another actual really good resource is you can come up with plot points from a fantasy RPG, from like a Pathfinder or a Dungeon and Dragons, or another fantasy type role-playing game system that maybe has pre-made adventures. You don't have to mimic the adventures. You can just take sort of plot points from them, especially if they're sort of a little over the top, and you could make a game based around that. You know, you can make an anime version of those, and I think that would be really cool to do, and I think this is the perfect world to do it in. Um, there are some resources if you want to look up, like, lists of spells online, um, just so that people know some of the familiar spells from the universe. You can find them online. They, they have listings of them from all the sources that they've come out with, so you have an idea of what these spells are when people are designing them. Now granted, they are going to design them in the Besom form, <coughs> rather than use them in something like a Dungeon and Dragons or something, or Pathfinder form. It gives a good point to work off of. Now I would keep it similar, match the similar story beats to the anime. So the anime usually has an overarching plot for either half a season or an entire season, and at that point in time they go on little adventures along the way, and that's what you're going to do is they're you get some kind of overarching plot which you establish early on that's going to cause these characters to go on an adventure. And along the way, they're going to go on these little small adventures that might be one or two sessions in of themselves. Sort of like it would be one or two episodes here before you have to move on to the next place. The, keep the story beats the same effectively to the end. And so it's like when you're making your adaptation of whatever you're doing, or making up your own story, that's the way you have to think is. You're going to have these story beats of an overarching plot, and then little sort of points in time where they're going on adventures, which really, as I said, shouldn't last more than one or two sessions. You don't want to bog it down, because, again, you want to... It's the kind of storyline that you want to go through it, and then maybe have another one, like a different season. You want to break it down into seasons for this one, since they did have a lot of seasons, and it's a kind of interesting way to break the story beats. So that's it for today. That's all I wanted to talk about. I went over these three series. I talked about how to use them in your Bessem games, give you good, some good suggestions. So if you have questions, comments, anything you want to say, anything you think I left out, please leave in the comments below. Please like this video. It shows your support for the channel and for the Empire, for the work I do. Please like this video. We're always looking for more members, more citizens of the Empire. And please share this video. If you don't be able to learn anything from it, or would just enjoy watching it, please share it with them. And until the next time, I bid you farewell.